good day and good vibe and welcome to another episode of Chill Art. Chill Art is a public service program of the Leesburg Center for the Arts. The program's goal is to help people shift focus to the positive. Body mind experts and guest contributors from across the globe volunteer to present their mindfulness modalities and give our viewers tools to better cope during challenging times. Then, after their presentations, we walk you through a short, no artistic ability required art project. Think of them as fun, creative, moving meditations that calm the soul and raise the spirit. Well, that'll do it. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Hi, my name is Pat Gilmore. I am actually the program director for the Leesburg Center for the Arts, and I am a meditative drawing instructor as well. So I am going to be your host for this episode of Chill Art. So today we're going to cover three different kinds of meditative drawing. The first one, the first one we're going to go over very quickly because there's an awful lot on the internet that you can pull up and help support you. But we'll briefly talk about it. The second one is we're going to talk about mandalas. That's right. This is what I instruct a lot of um, my workshop attendees on how to do. And in fact, you can go to episode 15 and learn how to do them in pen and ink. But well, we're not going to do the tutorial on that today. Today we're doing the tutorial on number three, which is neurographic drawing. Now, neurographic drawing is a type of art therapy, and you can use it to release negative emotions, and you can also use it to set your intentions and your goals. So it's super interesting. It's going to be a really fun tutorial. So what you need to do after I finish this introduction, I'll tell you when, go make sure you have a writing implement and a piece of paper. We'll touch on that in a second. So first up, I'm caffeinated. So art's fun, right? Yeah, let's make it fun. So the first one I want to talk about is Zen Tangles, otherwise known as Zen Doodling or uh, Tangling. And again, you can go on the internet and you can just put any of those words up and you can get YouTube instructions. You can get practice sheets. It's gotten very, very popular. You'll recognize it, and I'm sure. So I like to do it and it is really enjoyable to me. The only thing is, with Zen tangling, doodling, tangling, I can only retain about 15 of the patterns at any given time. I actually need to open up a little slit in here and make a USB port so we can put a portable hard drive to get into my brain so I remember it. So when I'm doing tangling, since I'm a beginner, I usually have pattern sheets in front of me. So you can get them off the internet, you can print them, and they'd be really helpful for you. So that's all I'm gonna say about Zen Tangle, Tangling, Doodling. Um, I'll let you go investigate that on your own, or maybe we'll do a separate uh, art tutorial about it. Number two, we're going to talk about mandalas. Now, this is my art. I've been doing them for years, and I instruct people on them. Um, when I do my big workshops, I uh, walk people through the history of what a mandala means or a mandala, depending on what part of the world I'm teaching in. I've done workshops in three different continents uh, and people have a different way of pronouncing it. I'm going to use the word mandala because I'm most comfortable with that. So a mandala is uh, usually, but not always, a symmetrical design. Now I have a few of my finished ones behind me. So let me introduce you to them by showing you them up, up close. This happens to be one of my favorites. So yes, you can do these. These take a while and I teach you step by step how to do these. It takes a few hours of a workshop to do it 
and it goes in different steps. And again, episode 15, you can learn to do this really fast. And so you can do them in the morning, even before you get out of bed. You just keep a clipboard and a pen near near you. And these are the, whoops, let's see if we can do it this way. No, I'm not good at flipping. Okay. I sometimes during high stress seasons, which is usually November, December, do one a day. They take me about 20 minutes. I pre-line them out in pencil, but all the detailing is done before I get out of bed. Well, I get out of bed, go to the bathroom, come back with my coffee. I'm human. So, uh, but because these are symmetrical, they have a way of balancing the different hemispheres of the brain. This, all this is, is just Sharpie marker. Oh, here, here's one lined out. And then I fill them in. I'm going to say it again. You're going to keep hearing me say it. Episode 15, art tutorial, chill art. So here's another one. And people look at that and go, how did you do that? I could never do that. Yes, you can. Because you, you will find if you go into that episode that I teach you that you just do one little dot at a time. So you don't have to learn patterns. You're literally, literally putting a dot, a dash, a curve down, and then you're repeating it all around the circle to keep it symmetrical. Here's another one. So these are done with watercolor paper and watercolor pencil is how I fill them up. So there's a psychiatrist, psychologist, psychoanalyst, psychoanalyst is the right word, contemporary of Freud. His name is Carl Gustav Jung, and he is the father of signs and symbolisms and interpreting your dreams. He had his clients, his patients, uh, drawing mandalas every day. So, so here is one that I haven't detailed yet. So the first stage of this is to draw the outline and then put in the ink. Here's another one. This one just makes me happy. Then, a, then what you do is erase all the pencil lines. And then you could be done, but you can also go back with colored pencils, watercolor pencils, crayons, anything to put color in, liquid watercolors. It's a little harder. It's hard to keep the liquid into the little areas that you want to do. So I did these up and someday I will sit down and finish them. Life gets busy. That's why the little ones work so well for me. And this one is partially filled in. So it's not quite done. So what I find doing these, and I, I don't put music on with lyrics. I put on instrumental music. This is just me because I don't want to be pulled away from the focus, from the present moment by falling into a memory because the lyrics brought something back or I'll start singing along. I try to find designated time where I'm not going to be interrupted because I'm infusing my mandalas. Okay. This is going to sound hooey dooey with uh, loving kindness and peace. I've actually done these uh, done mandalas for people that are um, physically challenged, such as a friend of mine had a wisdom tooth that needed to be pulled. So I flew up to Massachusetts to take care of her uh, well, that happened. And so while she was sleeping in the other room before the pain medication wore off, I did a mandala just infused in, in loving kindness and healing for my friend. So, and she came out of the room. Oh, here I am. I'm, I tend to go on tangents and say, I dreamed you were drawing me a mandala. It's because I was. 
So um, I try to do it in a meditative state. And the whole idea is to be in the present moment. What you want to do is be in the present moment. Because as we've said many, many times throughout this series, when you are in the present moment, you can't ruminate about the past or worry about the future. You can just be here now. Be here now. So that is the really therapeutic aspect of doing a mandala. So if you're in the midst of doing a mandala and you put your little mark down and then you put it, you could go to go all the way around, say it's an eight point mandala, you're gonna put it in seven more places to be symmetrical, right? What happens if your mind wanders and you put that dot or that dash in the wrong place? And people say there is no wrong place, right? There, re there really isn't. But what happens there is you get brought back into the fact that you were not focusing you were not focusing and that's why it went in the wrong place. So now you have to pay your penance. So now you have to put that mark in seven more places in, to make it exactly symmetrical. So in that way, it's a great way to train your mind to be in the present moment is to draw mandalas. So I think that's all I'm gonna do about this type of meditative drawing. And we're gonna go into the next one and that is neurographic art. So there are various steps to this type of drawing to make it therapeutic. As a background, there was a, um, there is, was, I'm not sure if he's still alive, but <laughs> this term came up in uh, 2014 and uh, from um, a psychologist who is also a architect. And he found that with his clients, they could draw a scribble pulling up the emotion they can't seem to get rid of. And then we could put through certain types of lines and you're gonna learn them in a minute. Certain type of lines through that scribble. And then we go in and round off all the collisions of the intersecting lines. You'll get it when you see it and that's coming up. <laughs> and what happens is before you even finish your drawing, the charge of the negative emotion is soothed down its edges quite literally come off and you feel more at peace so how good is that right there's only a couple of rules you're going to learn so at this time this is the time if you don't have a writing implement with you if you don't have paper with you you're going to need to put the pause button on and go get some and here's some suggestions before you hit the pause on me you can use regular paper and a pencil. I've done that in conferences. So I have 30 people doing this. Uh, or what's really fun, I find more fun because it's it pops more in your face, is to use a permanent marker. And you can use any color, but I'm gonna demonstrate with Sharpie, a black Sharpie. And Sharpie ink will bleed through regular copy paper. So if you don't have cardstock, grab a couple of sheets because you don't wanna mark your table underneath your drawing. So why don't you go do that now? And while you're getting that, I'm gonna change up the camera. So it's shooting my hands and we'll walk through a full neurographic drawing tutorial. So let's just start from the beginning. And we're gonna work with um, a negative emotion. Now I'm not gonna pick a big, big, big trauma. Sometimes I may make this mistake of making it clear we just wanna pick a little problem a little annoyance for my tutorials or when I'm doing them in group workshops because uh, we want to keep it on a positive level. I always like to teach positively and uh, it's different if I'm going to meet with somebody to do a one-on-one. -on -one. So just what you need to do is think of a problem or an annoyance and I could just use setting up these cameras as an annoyance. Um, you don't have to do anything really, really heavy. So let's just do that. So I've got my paper or my writing surface and I have a Sharpie. And again, you can use pencil or you can use a ballpoint pen. You can use crayon, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to just draw a quick scribble that represents an annoyance. And let me think what my annoyance will be. You don't have to share it and I'm not going to share it with you. So this is how my annoyance made me feel. 
and I need a darker pen. Okay, this is my scribble. And luckily I have this blotter because I have to find a pen that isn't drying out that one was dry. Okay. Next, what we're going to do is put through this entire drawing neurographic lines. Now, neurographic lines have qualities, and it's easier to tell you what a neurographic line isn't than it is to tell you what it is. A neurographic line is not straight. A neurographic line is not a curved, repeated pattern. So it's not repeating like this. And a neurographic line goes in one direction. It doesn't go back upon itself. So think of that as looping. It does not do this. So that is what a neurographic line isn't. Okay, a one, and a two. A neurographic line, and we're going to start them all off the paper, and you'll see why. A neurographic line goes in a, hmm, how do I put this? In a direction that you don't want it to go. Your subconscious mind is wanting it to go this way. Well, we're going to make it go where it is not expected to go. Because this whole process has to do with tricking your subconscious mind out of pattern making. If you have a reoccurring negative thought that comes up, maybe it was an incident from the past, that or it's just habitual thinking that habit is in your subconscious mind and it does not want to let go of the habit because the subconscious mind really is trying to take care of you to protect you from hurting it itself again but that is where pattern making is is in the subconscious mind so i'm going to do another one so you see it doesn't feel comfortable for me to bring that line down there but i I, the subconscious mind will want me to do what it wants to do, which is keep the pattern of negative thinking. So here is my scribble. Hopefully you have a scribble. And we are going to draw neurographic lines through the scribble. So we're going to modify this emotion by drawing into it. So I'm going to start off the page. And I'm putting a neurographic line through uh, there. So it went all in one direction. You can start start at the top, bottom, doesn't matter. But I did not want to go off in that corner. I wanted to go over here. Do it again. Okay, so you're going to want to put, for a piece of paper this size, ooh, I, want it, I don't want to go that way. I'm messing with my subconscious mind. I could probably put through seven of these through the middle of your drawing, but starting on the outside boundaries of your paper. So they're curved. The lines uh, do not loop back upon themselves. They don't go in a repetitive pattern, and they are definitely curved, not straight. So that's probably good. How, how do you like your art so far? <laughs> this is not about the finished result. Everything that I teach, almost everything I teach in the art world, is about process. It's about being in the process. And in this case, it's about being in the here and now. And the finished result is not not really important. That's different. If you want to take a watercolor class that concentrates on making a great landscape, that is different. This is process art. My mandala is a process. The Zentangles are process. And neurographic drawing is definitely process. So that is your first step or your second step. Scribble, meditate, scribble, 
and then put neurographic lines through it. The next thing we want to do, and here is the true transformation that starts to happen, is we want to round off any hard angles. So each of these lines that have come through here has collisions. These are the intersections. These two energies have collided. They've collided with themselves, the neurographic lines, and they've collided with the annoyance you just scribbled. So you want to make everything rounded off. That doesn't mean make circles. You can, but you're going to round off any collision of two lines because they become sharp. Notice this is a very sharp angle. So I'm going to go in there. And round that off. Here's an angle. I'm going to round that off and fill it in. I miss one. This is so much more soothing to the mind. So if you go out in nature, you don't find right angles. Mother Nature makes things with curves. I'm coming around to this collision. I'm putting that in. And yeah, I could just go over my lines. Make all smooth. So that is an example of a neurographic rounding. And we're going to do the entire paper. That's why we don't want to start with a big piece of paper. Take forever. And if you find an annoyance, maybe you're at work, grab your post-it notes. They're small pieces of paper. Put a scribble on it and then round it. So. So you're going to hear me going. All I'm doing is making that darker because my pen was running out. Okay. We feel much more comfortable in life around circles or blobs than we do with right angles. Okay. I love the fact this fellow that coined their graphic art. Um, is also an architect because I love numbers. I love sacred geometry. I love order. And that in is encompassed in architecture. Let's go up here. Here we go again. Collision, collision. Right angle, right angle. Or angle. Rounding it off. So when I teach this in bigger conferences for breakout sessions, um, there's a lot of people in class. And I'll go around and I'll take a look at what they've done. And when they've done these little itty bitty roundings, these little tiny roundings. And it's valid. It's what I told them to do. But use some ink. Don't be afraid of using ink. Go ahead, go in here and get bold. Take away any sharp edges. I'll take huge chunks of those angles away. Here, that's a sharp edge. I'm also messy. My money dollars are very, very precise. <laughs> I get messy in this. Life is messy. Emotions are messy. So I'm just going to speed this up for me.
be the next step? Well, you could add more neurographic lines, in which case this whole paper would be filled. I might put another one through here uh, and this way. And the whole reason being that as you wouldn't know where the scribble began. You still right now don't know where the scribble began. It's been absorbed by your overdrawing and rounding of the curves. So your trauma has been absorbed and your subconscious mind has been affected. And a lot of times I'll tell you, when people first do this, they feel very uncomfortable. It's not until they do a few of these drawings that they feel more calm. And that is simply because your subconscious mind doesn't want you messing with it. <laughs> Just it wants to keep you protected. I mentioned that before. And in habit patterns. Now I haven't tried this. I'm not in private practice right now. But one of the things I did as a hypnotherapist when I had my offices was um, smoking cessation and weight loss. So I did not know about this back then. It would be interesting if you're trying to quit smoking, if this would help. Of course, you know, you're using your hands. So. Um, but maybe... I'll mess around with this a little bit more in my own personal life. I probably will. To get me into the gym. And that's not using it for negative purposes. I would be envisioning the happiness I feel when I am on a weight machine. Okay. So there you go. Two seconds. I'm not going to even turn the cameras off. I will edit it. I want to show you close up a picture I did. So this is a piece of neurographic art. I had so much fun doing this. So after drawing all these rounding of the intersections, I went back in with liquid watercolor. Now, pretend this is a brush. What I did in each of the places is I put water in each of the blurbs and then I took a eyedropper bottle of color and I put a couple of colors in each one and they blended together. And then after they all dried, I went in and I put more neurographic lines in only so that I didn't have a big mass of pink here, pink and red here. I broke them up more, meaning I went in and said, oh, let's make, put some more ink in. Remember, we need to use a lot of ink. This is not the right side. I just went in and I separated these. So oh, they had buddies, little buddy neurons next to one another. This gave me so much joy. At the end, I just look at this. This is one of the most favorite things I've done in a long time. As much as I love my mandalas, um, this gave me great joy. So I turned my annoyance into a thing of joy. So it's, I don't even remember what the annoyance was that I doodled. Uh, but I love it. So, this is what I would like to tell you. Draw your neurographic drawings. And then, if you choose to, send them, send images of them to us at the Leesburg Center for the Arts. And I'll give you the address to send your drawings to. So we can put them up under episode 31 on our chill art page. 
and people can see what you've done. You don't have to tell us what your emotion was or whether you were trying to put your intention and goal setting down and put it, make it happy. Uh, the email you want to send that to is lcfa.buzz at gmail.com. That's lcfa.buzz at gmail.com. And you can see all the episodes, the biographies of the uh, presenters. And we've had presenters from across the globe not just the country, but from other countries, come in and talk about their mindful modalities, meaning what they do or they teach for people to be in the present moment. It's not just sitting in a corner and chanting, oh, though it could be, it could be martial arts, it could be drumming, it could be dance, it could be photography, there's so many different episodes, uh, and the way you will find it is to go to leesbergarts.com backslash chill art. That's leesbergarts.com backslash chill art, and you'll be able to click into the YouTube playlist from there. There's lots of them. There's something, hopefully, for everybody, and if you'd like to present, if you'd like to do your recording, um, please contact me. I am Pat Gilmore. I'm the program director, not just an artist. And you can reach me through lcfa.bucks at gmail.com. Oh, I thought I had turned all sorts of notifications off. I guess that's the notification that says, you're done. <laughs> Keep playing. Keep being in the present moment. And have fun. We'll see you soon.